Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the Nesbitt Connection podcast. This is a kind of a different podcast. I, I've, I've actually taken the advice of some people, and, and I'm going to do this on YouTube as well. So for those of you who are on my YouTube channel, you're going to actually get to see you know, how these podcasts actually happen in the real world. And uh, it, 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 as you can see by the way I'm dressed, it's somewhat informal, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. So one of the things that happened, like I'm, re- I'm recording this podcast, actually, uh, truth be known, it's the last day that I am 57. Tomorrow is my birthday, and uh, so today's February the 4th, and for, and for what it's worth, Sarah, who kind of runs uh, everything for me behind the scenes, I always call her my sober second thought. Actually, today is her birthday, so I want to say happy birthday to Sarah. But uh, the thing I want to do a little different with this podcast is, you know, I, I've been sitting back watching this, this this truckers protest that's going on in Ottawa, and it's actually now it's all over the world, which I think is fantastic. But, but what's interesting is that, you know, obviously there's some people for it, some people against it. And, and i got to share with you, if I want to see my customers and the people I work with, i got to get out of the truckers protest. And, and the reason I mention this is because I've said for a long time, that the people I work with are the ones that say have a shower after work, the blue collar, you know, the, the, and I love working with them. They're the salt of the earth, you know. I and what's quite interesting with this is I have worked my entire life with truck drivers. Okay, some of my best friends, you know, over the years have been truck drivers. When I was a kid, you know, my dad owned a bunch of trucks. You know, I drove a truck. All I wanted to do when I was a kid was drive a truck. So I've got a very, you know, I got a real big old soft spot. For truck drivers, so you know, like I said, so this podcast is being you know recorded, you know, while this protest is being on, and 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 I thought one of the things that I would do is, as you can see, you know, if you're watching on a, on a YouTube video, there's a lot of books behind me, and I've read all of them or most of them, uh, and I got to share with you one of the biggest challenges with books is reading them and then putting into practice what you learn. You'd be surprised how. You know, I, I'll read a book and say, oh, yeah, I want to use that when I do a training session. I'll pick up a book two years later. Oh, gosh, I forgot to use that. So, like it's like I say, there's, to me, there's there's um, there's quite of a gap sometimes from what I learn and what I apply. And I, and I think that's normal. But I, I just want to point out if, if the, um, you know, if you can see just kind of, I guess, up above my shoulder, there's a kind of a Michelin bobblehead up there over on this side, I guess. And um, I can't even get the side right because the camera's wrong. But there's a couple of books there called The Leadership Challenges. And I have, uh, I think there's a, I forget how many editions, they keep revising it. But it, it, if you're into leadership, and it's interesting because I was, on, I was lucky enough to be actually on the Devin Dyer podcast last week. Uh, and Devin, what a class guy. If you, if you don't know Devin or if you don't listen to his podcast, you got to turn into the Devin Dyer show. The, he's a class act, and he's he's all about helping the construction industry. So tune in to Devin. You have to. But the reason I bring this up is Devin asked me, you know, towards the end of the podcast, if I would recommend, you know, a, a top leadership book. And, and boy, that's kind of hard because there's a lot of them. And, and I got to admit, I somewhat stumbled on this one because uh, you know the, there's, I've read so many books that um, the, the interesting thing is is the book that I would find good say 15 years ago um, is you know isn't as good today because I found a better one. And, and if I was say well if I would have been thinking when Devin asked me that answer, I would have said my next book. Because you know I'm continually reading books. Uh, I, I'm finishing one there. Just I got another you know, five, another half an hour I'll be done. Uh, you know, Preston Manning, who to me was the greatest prime minister that Canada never had. You know I, I really love Preston Manning, and he talks about leadership. And he kind of re- he, the, the whole book actually is based on biblical figures. So if you're a Christian, you know it, it was really cool, and I thought, and and it was I, I just found it fascinating and so much to learn. You know from Preston Manning, but but one of the books that I mentioned to Devin last week that I thought was you know, a classic that a lot of people should read. It, it's called The Leadership Challenges by Kuzis and Posners. And, and I forget, I want to say that it's in 20 different languages, and I forget how many millions of copies this book has sold. And, and the thing that really will say, you know, struck a little, you know, the, the chord with me on why I wanted to talk about this book on a podcast is because of what's happening today. You know, when you see what's happening today, 
with regards to COVID, and I'm not here to be a conspiracy. I'm just, I, want, I want to share with you what I think and about how leadership works. And you can see, you know, with everything that's going on, let's just say when you look at the best leadership books ever written in the world, what these people are doing with COVID is it's, it's wrong. It, it, there's no way it's ever going to get resolved because they're going at it the wrong way. And this book, The Leadership Challenges, I think really points out you know a few things that you know where we could you know kind of change things and make it better. So one of the things that I want to share with this book of leadership challenges is you know that they talk that there's these five uh, you know th- these five principles that if you're going to be a good leader that you have to do and and they have ch- they've, all over the world they've they've, they've looked at these uh, you know these different things and, and they're the same all over the world and they've even you know picked four qualities of what people want in a leader I'll get to them later but all I'm getting at this is not a local thing. This is worldwide. This is not people say, you know, blue collar. This is not white collar. It's everybody. Okay, and I can't emphasize that enough. This is everybody. They they did their homework, and I, I'm, I'm telling you, Kuzos and Posner's class act. You'll love the book called The Leadership Challenges. If you're in the construction industry in, in Canada, if and if you work for PCL, it, it's like the leadership bible to work for PCL which is the largest construction company in Canada. So it's a good book, okay? and it's very, very well recognized. But the interesting thing is, is I'm going to go through what, what they call the top five things you know, for, that a leader needs to do. And I'm going to go over through them kind of fastly, but then I'm going to break them down uh, in a way that I can explain how you know, we're going to solve situations with, with, with what we do. And I'm going to also kind of you know, give some examples of what's going on in the world today with regards to this mess we're in, we'll say, and, and how, you know, they're not even applying some of these things. So the, I'm going to go through them real fast. Of course, they are. The first one is model the way. Okay. The second one is inspire a shared vision. The third one is challenge the process. The fourth one is enable others to act. And the fifth one is encourage the heart. So I just, I want to point out, you know, when you go to model the way, okay, there's the first one, model the way. I find it completely, I'm going to say it's disgusting, but it's also hilarious. I've, I've got a lot of people who follow me on Instagram. I follow a lot of people on Instagram. I love their support. Um, I've got one follower, example. If, if you don't follow the Concrete Diva, you got to follow the Concrete Diva. She's based out of L.A., and she's in Los Angeles, and sometimes her and I you know, message back and forth with some of the stuff going on. And I watch what goes on in California. And when you look at, say, I don't know how many times now, the governor of California, Gavin Newsom, who's, a, he's, a, he's a, 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 you know, you got to wear a mask for this. You can't believe the stuff that they want to do down there. It's almost as bad as where I am here in Ontario with these crazy mask rules. But what's interesting is, is they've got these mask rules that are so strict. And it seems like every, you know, too often we'll call it. There's videos and pictures appear of this Gavin Newsom not wearing a mask himself. Like, and that's the thing. If we're, if we're going to do this, we have to be the first to model it. I'll give an example. If, you, if you're, um, say, for example, if, you, if you're managing an operation and if you're late for work every day, how can you expect people to be on time for work if you're late for work every day? Uh, one better than I, I'll give you a good example. Back in the days when I had a company vehicle, and I had one for, I don't know, 20-some years, I was what you'd call a clean truck guy. I always had a clean pickup truck because, to me, I spent so many hours in, in there every week that I wanted a clean truck. And the reason I mention this is because I had a clean truck and look after my pickup, everybody on my team kept their truck clean as well. So, like I say, you get back to this first one is model the way. And I don't know why some of these political leaders can't see it. You know, people do as people see. People do as people see. So if we want people to do things, the first thing we need to do, of course, is model the way. we got to be a role model. And, of course, you know, and not only that is it, you know, when we're a role model, we typically... And I'll give you an example. With some of the stuff that's happening here in Canada, you cannot believe... I spent a full day down at this truck protest the first day it was there. I wanted to see some customers. It's pretty simple, okay? So I get down there. There's some people down there. Uh, but, but the reason I point this out is that I was there on the street. 
And, and I could not believe how there was no garbage. The, 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 everybody was so well behaved. Like, it, it was incredible to see how good everything was. And I'm going to tell you, there was like every protest, I don't care whose it is, every protest, there are people there that are plants. Okay, And, and they are there to do what they can to make it look bad. And, and you know how you can spot them, and I wish I would have been a bit more alert when I was there, is they were wearing masks. You know, it, was, it was dead simple. The ones are, And if you look on TV, those are the ones that they're showing, you know, one person holding a flag, and of course that's all they're talking about in Parliament is the one person holding the flag. Well, they had a mask on. But, 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 but like 99.9% of the people there, they were not wearing a mask. And of course, you know, it was very, very well behaved. And and, the, and what they're doing is, to me, they've got Christian values in the way that they are doing this with love. But what's fascinating is if you listen to the news, you listen to the parliament, it's like they're in some third world country watching something different. And I'm, I'm, I'm amazed at what this is. And if there's one thing that's going to come out of this, this, this whole protest thing, whatever you want to call it, is I think people are going to be more so in tune with the fact that you cannot believe the media and you cannot believe the government. So, you know, that's model away. That's the first one. I don't want to dwell on it too long, but that's model away. The other thing, well, of course, the second one is, is inspire a shared vision. And, you know, if we are a leader, we have to paint a picture of hope, saying, look, this is where you're going to go. And, and you know, what's, what's quite interesting is that today, with young people in particular, if they don't see that they have an opportunity to grow, and if they're not going to move ahead, guess what? They're not going to stick around. You know, when we bring them in, this is why onboarding is so important. When we bring somebody in and say, look, you might not know how to do that now, but when you're done, you're going to know how to finish concrete. When you're done here, you know, in six months' time, we're going to show you how to operate a loader. You know, in six months' time, you're going to have a trade you never had before. we got to inspire a shared vision. And, and we got to keep talking about it. And we got to put them in the picture. A story is only good as long as they are in it. Okay? And this is why we got to keep telling the story about where they're going to go and how we are going to do our best to help them get there. Let me ask you this. What, what you'd call the vision, good vision, have you heard from any government institution in the last 18 months? All you heard is flatten the curve, do this. You know, what can you expect when you put people in homes and you tell them not to think and you just do what you're told, don't do anything else, don't just you do what you're told. And it's interesting, and I don't want to say this as an insult, but you can't imagine how many people have said to me they cannot believe how the entire country has just turned off their thinking switch. Nobody's thinking anymore. Well, gee whiz, they were told not to. What do you expect? So if we are a leader, the second thing we have to learn to do is inspire a shared vision. We've got to keep talking about the future. You know, and, 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 and like all you hear, in, in, like I'm in Ontario, Canada, and all you get to hear is what this vaccine, passport, and everything. I'll give you a classic example, okay? This weekend, tomorrow's my birthday. And because of all this vaccine, passport, and nonsense, or whatever, and masks, we're not going out for, for to a restaurant. We typically always go for a restaurant. Not going to happen this year because of it. So the government is doing everything they can to hurt businesses, and they, they, they don't even see it. And, and I think that's something I think that, you know, and, and now obviously there's going to be people who argue with me. That's fine. You know, and I, I, I'm just sharing what I see and I think what the majority see. And, and it, it's interesting with, with this is that I, I, I remember one time, I, I, when I do training on site, quite often I will show a picture of Archie Bunker, and then I will show a picture of Billy Porter. And I will kind of point out that, hey, look, just in my generation, we've gone from the likes of Archie Bunker to Billy Porter. There, there's a change in how people think and act. And what's interesting, I was at this one place one time, and this Portuguese guy said to me, he says, you know something? He said, my dad used to watch Archie Bunker just so it could make him feel normal. And I want to point out this whole truckers thing, you have no idea how, because everybody's been shut up and told not to talk or you don't voice an opinion, it's helped everybody feel normal. And, and that's one thing that I have noticed that I want to point out. Okay, this is where we're going to get into some of the stuff that you know we'll say is um, it's interesting in the news, because the third one, of, the third one, of course, is challenge the process. So challenge the process. I'll give you a real good example. 
And I, the other night, my mom and I, we have some good talks. She just lives around the corner from me, and I go over, you know, I try to go over once a week and, and have a visit with her. And, and it's like I said to my mom, I said, you know, mom, if, if, if I was diagnosed with cancer, you know, I, I would probably, um, I, I'd ask for a second opinion. Don't want to come for the treatment. That's, a second opinion is very normal. And this whole thing with COVID, you're not allowed a second opinion. You know, I'll give you a classic example. Joe Rogan brought on some really good guests, asked some really good questions. I listened to the one podcast that Joe Rogan's is three hours long. I've listened to it about two and a half times. And of course, you know, you got to challenge the process. And the, the funny thing is, is that there's this perception today that only the elites know everything. I got to ask you a question: Who invented the plane? Okay, you know Wilbur and Orville Wright. Orville Wright, I guess, uh, invented the, the airplane. They didn't have a pilot's license. They weren't aeronaut, aeronautical engineers. They were bicycle mechanics. And look where we are today. You know, I, I'm going to tell you, when you, when you sit back and you look at what some of these experts are doing, it makes absolutely no sense. It's just completely crazy. And you get, it, my mother says, follow the money. You know, who, who's the one that's behind all this? Follow the money. So I think there's a lot of truth to that. So like I say, here we are in an, any given situation, challenge the process. So if you're running an operation, you want somebody to come up with a better idea. You need somebody. You have to be encouraging people, you know, to challenge what you're doing and find a better way. But for some reason, with this nonsense that's going on for the last almost two years, nobody's allowed to challenge the head guy there, Dr. Fauci. I am science. I know it all. What kind of an attitude is that? You know, nobody's allowed to challenge him. And whenever he does, somebody challenges him. I, I, I absolutely love watching Rand Paul, Senator Rand Paul, you know, go at Dr. Fauci. Because there's somebody that's challenging the process. And that's how leadership's supposed to work. So I said, I say, could be, so this is, you know, it, yes, it's a book review, but I want to point out how the simple characteristics of leadership, that the world proven characteristics of leadership, we're not using to get us out of the biggest pandemic that ever happened. And I just, I, I find it absolutely incredible how, how, how this is, it, it is not being done. I, it, it's incredible. You know, I'll give you an example. I grew up, you know, I grew up in a gravel pit, but I lived around farms. Everybody around us was a farmer. And what was interesting about that is all the farmers would talk. You know, if one had a problem with a crop, they'd ask the other, what do I do? Well, you know, I tried this fertilizer, I tried this seed, you know. Maybe I try a no-till crop next year. Maybe I try some ag lime. Everybody talked and they made it better. And this is farmers, and I'm not trying to say farmers are simple. I just want to point out how you challenge the process and you should always be trying to make it better. And that is not happening. That's not happening. You just get the vaccine, you go home and you be quiet. Put on your mask. Oh my goodness. Like, well, what a way to, you know, I, I'm just amazed at how others, you know, how that works. So, of course, the fourth one is enable others to act. You know, we have to enable others to act. And here we are with whatever that's gone on in the last, you know, two, two years, whatever it is, nobody is allowed to act. In Ontario, right now where I am, if a doctor as much as questions the vaccine, you know, they, they, they get questioned and they get brought up by the medical association. Is that enabling others to act? You know, I, I took an online course here. I guess I finished it shortly after Christmas. Excellent course. And the lady that facilitated the course was living in Colorado Springs, Colorado. And she said to me, she said, Mark, she said, down here... She said, if a doctor prescribes uh, that hydrochloroxide, I think it's called, please forgive me, I have a hard time saying the name, um, to a patient for COVID, if they take it at the pharmacy and if the pharmacist thinks it's for COVID, they won't fill the prescription. How, how, tell me, how is that enabling others to act? And like I say, it just, it's baffling me. If, put it this way, if you had somebody say that, uh, you know, drove a truck for you, and all of a sudden they see something wrong with the truck. 
it, and you don't enable them to act, and they do. They just keep driving the truck. Well, I'm not allowed to think. I'm just going to keep driving the truck. Well, then guess what? You know, in no time at all, you know that, that little bit of rear end oil is leaking out. The because you didn't allow them to act, you're going to have a burnt up rear end. So you could never do that in business. There's no possible way that you could ever do that in business and succeed without enabling others to act. So I just want to throw that out there. That's, you know, of the four, you can see how, so so far, the first four, I think every government in North America has absolutely failed. So which means that, you know, they've never read a leadership book. And, I, and this is the part I just find fascinating. How can they be leaders when they don't know how to lead? And of course, the fifth one is encourage the heart. You know, we have to be able to encourage people. You know, it, w- w- where do you see the encouragement here? You know, there's no encouragement in the country anywhere. And, and you know, and, and we can learn from this. I'll never forget, I was in a meeting one night, and, and I went to sit in the front row because I'm deaf. I always sat in the front row. But when I could go to a meeting, now I can't go because of COVID, everything's locked up. And I sat beside this uh, gentleman, his name was Eddie. And Eddie, I want to say, was in his 80s. And I wish I could remember what happened, but I sat down beside Eddie, and Eddie just turned to me, and he said, Mark, he said, that's what you call a really good, bad example. I have never forgotten what Eddie said, because the thing is, is that we have seen some really good, bad examples of not encouraging the heart. We've seen some really good bad examples of not enabling others to act. We've seen some really good bad examples of, of, of not being able to challenge the process. So the, so those good bad, you know, those good examples, there's bad ones, and of course there's some really good bad examples out there that we've seen, you know, in the last little bit. Of course, now, that's the, we'll call it, the, 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 the things that we need to do to be a leader. Now, what's interesting is they also went in this book and then they, 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 they talked what they called about the top four qualities that everybody looks for in a leader. Okay, the top four qualities that we look for in a leader. What do you want in a leader? And what's interesting is that if you break these down, and I often do this with, with groups, I'll ask, what do you want in a leader? And I, you know, I ask, hey, what do you want? And then you'd be surprised. You know, I want them on time. I want people to think. And I want common sense. And then I'll kind of break it down. And I will say, now, let's just see if this is skills related or if it's an attitude. And you would be surprised. 80% of the things that we want from either a co-worker, doesn't matter if it's a co-worker or if it's a leader, is typically an attitude. It's not skills related. And I just the reason I point that out is when you go to these four things that the we look for in a leader, and I'll go through them real fast, and then I'll kind of expand on them. The first one is honesty. We want a leader that's honest. The second one is forward-looking. You know, where are we going? What are we doing? The third one is inspiring. We want somebody to inspire us. You know, get us that you can be more, become more, and, and, and I think that's, that's excellent. And, of course, the fourth one is competent. We want a competent leader. So when you look right now, I'll say in, in politics, I, it's funny because a friend of mine told me the other day, he said, Mark, he says, you got to go to liar.com, which is L-I-A-R.com, liar.com. You go to liar.com, which I did, and you know what you see? The Prime Minister of Canada, his little Wikipedia page. So I think he fails on honesty. And I'm not just picking on him. Is, is there a politician that's ever told the truth? And the thing is, like, I, again, I had a good chat with my mother the other night. When you look at what the media is trying to tell us, a classic example, when this protest for these truckers started, I want to say, I guess it was last Wednesday or Thursday, so I'll say a week ago, somebody at CBC, which is the Canadian-funded, 100% Canadian-funded media by the federal government, and, I, and I, it, 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 you cannot believe the stuff they say, but a reporter on there questioned if this truckers thing wasn't uh, a, a, a something to do with the Russians were the ones that were behind it. Can you believe that? I, I, I really believe that the Russians got more to do than create a truckers convoy in Canada. So like I say, this when you see this, th- there's no such thing as honesty. And, and of course, you know, it, it, it's amazing to see how it's everywhere. You cannot believe, you know, what, what's out there. And if so... And so, that's, like I said, I just want to touch on that because there's no such thing as honesty with the leader and then the government, the stuff we're being told us, it, that there's been so many lies. Uh, I'll give it a good example. Dr. Fauci has been caught in so many lies that it's incredible. 
So, of course, you know, we're not going to follow them. And, and what's interesting, one of the things that gets talked about in this book, and it's so true, is that if we do not believe in the messenger, we are never going to believe the message. We first have to believe in the messenger. And let's just say if that messenger isn't honest, we're never going to believe in them. Is that not true? So there's the first one. The second one is forward-looking. With everything that's going on, I'll really, I guess maybe we'll give them a, you know, a, a default for this one because they think forward-looking is maybe the vaccine. Maybe it is. I'm not anti-vaccine, okay? I have the first two shots, um, and, and, I, and I shared one of my previous podcasts with this because my daughter asked me to do it. I did it for the love of her. So, you know, like I say, so I'm not anti-vaxxer. I'm just, I'm pointing out that, you know, that there's one thing that they're doing that isn't forward-looking, okay? Inspiring. I don't know when the last time was I heard an inspiring message from the from our leaders. One of the most inspiring leaders, I, I, I love listening to him, was Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan was amazing. You know, he really was. Yeah, he was a professional talker and he was an actor and all that, but... You, you know, our, our prime minister in Canada, for my American listeners who don't know, his qualifications to become the prime minister is he was actually a part-time drama teacher. That's what he did. He taught drama part-time. So that being said, he's an actor, so he so he can do that too. So he, you know, he should be able to be inspiring. Um, so and, and of course, I want to go. Th- I think that I think I've did them all now. Except I want to talk about competent. If we are trying to lead somebody, we need to know what we're doing. And you'd be surprised how I see it, and I think we all see it. We see people today in positions that, first of all, they, you know, Edward Deming always says that if you don't know the process, if you don't know how to do the process and what's involved with the process, you should not be managing the process. And there's some truth to that. You know, if we're going to be a leader, we've got to be competent. We need to know what's going on. And my opinion is, is that, you know, all leaders are learners, and, if, and I, it, back in the day when I was managing quarries, I tried my best to be the smartest person in, in our group so I knew what was going on. And let's face it, when you are a leader of any organization, you need to know what's going on. And being competent gives you the ability to walk into a room and just kind of almost put your finger in the air and tub of the breeze if it's good or bad. You know, you should be able to walk in and know what's going on. If it's if it's in a positive, if it's good. If, it, if you're making money, if you're not making money, you know that's that should just should come. If, if you're a competent leader, that'll come to you naturally. So I hope you've enjoyed this podcast. I, I don't want to go on too long, and I, and I, and, and I just I, I thought because this book was so instrumental uh, with some of these things that they talk about, you know, with leadership and with, with everything that's going on today. I, you know, it, it, Preston Manning mentioned it actually in, in, in his book that I read. He says, you know, when you see anybody that's in a political role today, they know nothing about leading. They're not leaders. They're politicians. And, and it's incredible to see how we've got people trying to lead us that aren't leaders. And if you're in a kind of a political position, please pick up a book on leadership. The Leadership Challenges is a great book for you to start with. Okay, it is. And if I had a second pick, like I mentioned, the Devin Dyer Show, you know, it is the 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership by John Maxwell. Excellent books. So I, I, I want to thank you for uh, joining us. Hopefully you, you'll, you'll enjoy the, the YouTube video. Uh, I'm looking forward to doing these because I think, um, you know, it, I, I know myself, I like to be able to see somebody, you know, when, when I'm talking to them, probably because I'm deaf and i got to read lips. So it, it kind of goes, <laughs> goes hand in hand with that. Uh, so that being said, thanks for your continued support of this podcast. Thank you for your continued support of the YouTube channel, because that means a lot to me as well. And you take care, and don't be afraid to rate us, because you know the more you rate us, the more people get to see us. So thank you very much, and enjoy yourself.